Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody here to Monroeville's agenda setting meeting and Citizens Night here for May the 5th, 2022. Uh, we'll first please rise and then remain standing for a moment of silence for former Mayor Sherbert. Sure. Thank you. Please be seated. <laughs> Mrs. McIndoe, roll call, please. Mayor Greesock? Mr. Hizzy? You. Mr. Poach? Here. Mr. Stevenson? Here. Mr. Wolfram? Mr. Adams? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Mr. Biondo? Mr. Little? Here. Mr. Ratcher? Here. Ms. Rock? Here. Mr. Hugus? Here. Mr. Sedlak? Here. Mr. Weldon? Here. All right, thank you. Uh, Again, a few folks are missing this evening. They send their regrets. They'll all be present again on Tuesday for the normal, normal meeting. Thank you. Uh, as I mentioned before, I asked you to please stay for a moment. I wanted to take the opportunity, if Jared could put that photograph up we talked about earlier. I wanted to take a moment and uh, talk about the passing of somebody that I knew for a long time. We were just sitting here talking about telling some stories. Former mayor and councilman, uh, Mr. Tom Scherger. Uh, he'll, there'll be service for him at Corals on Monday, I believe uh, is correct. But uh, he served uh, as a World War II veteran, but um, I had the opportunity to, he, I lived two houses away from him growing up. Uh, we moved in the street at the same time, I was friends with his uh, son, Matt, and knew him for many, many years. An unbelievable time that he served on Monroeville Council for 24 years, uh, from 1964 to, um, or, 1989, and then again came back as mayor for eight years from 1990 uh, on. And uh, it was just a great guy, somebody that we knew for a long, long time. And uh, when you walk around Monroeville, you'll see his name on many, many things that we have on our things at the library here at the municipal building and some of the other facilities that were out there. Um, he, great, great person, great dad, and a real you know public servant that we had too. And we were all exchanging stories as we were talking about knowing him for a number of years, and I did. Chief Cole came in and talked about even uh, back when he was a r real runner, Mr. Sugar uh, qualified twice for the Boston Marathon. And um, we were downstairs doing the math, and when he was 30 years old, I believe, right, Doug, to do that, um, Mr. Sugar would meet, meet him up with him at um, Ramsey and Haymaker, proceed down Haymaker, come back up 48, back down Haymaker, back to Ramsey. Now, Doug was 30, and Mr. Sherger was 65, and usually kind of ran into the ground, if I remember <laughs> correctly, mm -hmm. you know, at the time. So, mm -hmm. uh, but he was, a, he was a pretty good guy, and my sympathies to him and the family uh, as well uh, to, that are around too. So I just wanted to take that for a, a moment, take that opportunity to, to do that this evening. And Joe, thanks for getting that to us again. Joe said, like, let everybody know today as, as well. So I said, this is our uh, Citizens Night and agenda setting meeting too. So um, those comments stuff, I think first we'll talk to our move to on the agenda to our citizens remarks and comments uh, as well. And I want to first call up, I saw Pam here Russia, from the library. She had some things she wanted to do with, so we'll lead off with Pam. Good evening, everybody. Uh, if you don't know me, I am Pamela Bodziak. I am the assistant director at Monroeville Library, and I know you've got our bulletin and some save the dates, so I won't take up too much time. Just a couple of upcoming events that are going on at the library. For our save the dates, uh, we're very excited to announce our Queen's Jubilee Tea Fundraiser, which is co-sponsored by the Friends of the Monroeville Public Library. That's going to be Sunday, June 12th from 12 to 3 at the Pitcairn Park building. There will be a fundraising luncheon with desserts, crafts, raffle baskets, and a full high tea service. Uh, tickets will be going on sale soon at the library, so we hope to see you there. We're also excited to announce our second summer book sale. That is going to be Saturday, July 9th for $10. Uh, it's as many books as you can fit into a bag. I am afraid that we do provide the bag for the $10. Um, so if anybody was planning on coming with the real massive one, I'm afraid you're out of luck. 
Uh, most exciting is the return of Fun Fest, which is going to be our fourth annual Fun Fest event on Saturday, August 27th. That's from 12 to 4. Uh, we're bringing back this community festival after a two year delay. We'll have food, games, music, exhibitor booths. Uh, we're also very excited that we are planning on welcoming uh, special guests, NCAA football athletes, Kalijah Kansi and Nick Patty to the event. So that will be very awesome. Our summer reading program kicks off this year on June 6th. I could do a whole presentation just on summer reading, so I'll just say that the short of it is it is truly open for all ages, from young kids to seniors. You can read books, try some of our summertime challenges, and take part in great <coughs> programs. You might even win a prize. Um, to check that out, starting on June 6th, you can stop in at the library, or you can check out our website. A huge thank you to our partner, uh, PA Career Link, who have been coming to the library every Tuesday from 10 to 1 to assist people with job <coughs> searching, resume writing, and job training. That's been going really well. There's been a lot of interest there. We're really grateful to them for coming out to help. Uh, they can also assist with transportation services and act getting access to clothing and uniforms um, for people on the job. We're planning a job fair at the library in conjunction with them on Wednesday, June 8th. More details to follow. And finally, we are excited to say that we have the return of our live music programs kicking off on Wednesday, May 11th at 7 o'clock with Lit Into Jazz. That will feature uh, Calvin Stemley, who is a local saxophonist, and his wife Gem Gemma, who is a poet and they'll be talking a little bit about the connection between jazz and literature as well as performing some music live. Uh, lots more coming up. Please check out your schedule, and uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, right. Pam. Thanks, Pam. <clears throat> Appreciate it. All right. So um, anything else for Citizens Night and Commons? This is the opportunity, folks, to come up, come on any agenda item that we have in place. If you do, if you please come in and si sign in, please. No problem. I'll look at Eric's. Thank you. Thank you. And you state the name for your record uh, and sign George in. Georgiana Woodhall. Um, I'm not here to discuss the Sunoco gas line, um, but I am here to discuss the meeting that was scheduled. And um, I, the information I passed out to you were emails that I re received from through the Right to Know. And they are, um, <coughs> I'd just like you to take uh, notice it on, of the email that's under, underlined. Um, on October 19th of 2021, uh, this was an e email from Mr. Wilton to the representative of uh, Sunoco. And it says, as for the easement request, you will need a plan prepared by a survey that shows the area of the easement, a meets and bounds description of the easement area, and a short narrative description of what and why you are requesting the municipality to grant the easement request. The request will then be presented to council for a decision. You or a representative will need to be present at the council meeting to present your request. Um, I came to every citizen's night, I came to the council meetings um, and Sunoco had months to send a representative to either a citizen's night or a council meeting. And not one yeah, I was here. person was. from Sunoco <clears throat> was here in council chambers to answer the questions that I had. And I know that there are a lot of people interested in coming. Um, I reached out to uh, State Representative Markosik's office um, on, I believe it was April, April 21st, and asked for information that the state regulates for the gas lines. And I also presented him with the information from meetings that went on in 1989. I know I gave each member of council uh, one of those. And the importance of uh, the federal re regulations that um, they are required to educate the public. And um, when I got a call and Mr. Markosik stated that he would reach out to Mr. Little to set up a meeting. Um, I was told that it would, um, 
be either May or June, and I suggested that, you know, that we would need time to prepare. People need time to, you know, get coverage for their children, whatever. Um, they called me back from Ms. Markosik's office, said that a meeting was set up for June. Um, so I proceeded to get a hold of people for this June meeting, and Mr. Little um, had called me, was it yesterday, Tim? Mm -hmm. um, I returned his call this morning for him to tell me that it was next week. Um, and that is really not enough time for people when they have responsibilities, children, to get coverage to come here next week. Um, and so I'm here to ask you if you would postpone that until June. And Mr. Little, what was the reason why this gentleman couldn't come in June? Well, he initially told me uh, right after the meeting, right after the uh, last month's meeting that um, he was going to come here in May and then he emailed me and said he had a, another commitment in Beaver County. And I said, okay. And as you mentioned, I was talking to Brandon Markozik, our state representative, and, and I told him that. Well, he emailed me yesterday. He said he can make it for May. I said, great, fine. In the meantime, I had a call into you and you called back and I said he'll be here uh, on Tuesday. And I, I just asked because of the short period of time <laughs> that we were notified. Um, I had already placed calls to people, told them that we were having a meeting in June. Um, and that's not much time. I mean, this company had from October the 19th to be here either in February, March, or April, you know, to answer questions. You know, they had months. And we have not even five days. People don't, you know, to have their children come and, or get coverage for their children. And I don't know, Mr. Chris Coop is the person that's coming, correct? Correct, correct. Okay, and I'm looking at this paper here because um, it almost sounded like he was coming from the other side of the state. No, the gentleman I uh, initially talked to, Jim um, Karamatsis, I believe his name is, he is, He's in Redding. He's the guy on the other side of the state. Chris Coop is from Butler County. Okay, because I had here um, on this other email, it said, Chris Coop, Lead Specialist, Public Affairs, Energy Transfer, 6051 Wallace Road, um, Extension, Wexford, PA. So that's pretty much right in our backyard. It wouldn't be an inconvenience for, to change a meeting. Um, and like I said, I know that people want to come. I place calls, and and I, I think that's that's very little to ask to have it in June. Well, I do want to clear up one thing. Uh, Mr. Wilden, didn't we have Mr. Uh, Karamatsis, I believe is the way you pronounce it. Wasn't he here yeah. at the March meeting? He was in the audience. Yeah. Uh, and That's what I thought. And did not come up to the podium. Uh, well, nobody knew anything about it. So I, it's well, there wasn't any questions <laughs> for it at the time. I, re I remember him being here. He's yeah, been he's right there. Right he's right introduced to, to, to do that as well. You know. It, I, I, like I said, I never saw anything advertised that there was going to be a representative here. So, well, I mean, somebody I'm would have had a question. Asking, I'm sure he would have answered. I'm just it. asking. Yeah. I mean, like I said, these people knew since October, according to this email, and uh, you know, and I was here every meeting, and I would have thought, um, this is a company that's making billions of dollars and required by federal law to educate people, mm -hmm. and you know, they're going to give a five-minute. PowerPoint, is that what you said about some... Well, I told meeting? him to limit it to five minutes, staying in, in you know, in concert with our policy mm -hmm. of a five-minute Okay, minute well, I, as I said, I know there are people who want to come, and, and, you know, everybody on council, you know, you have your wards, you're representing the people, and that's what it's all about. Sure. So and well, Georgia, I, just, I think that, in, you know, I can ask the, the rest of the council, but, you know, we have the opportunity. He's on an agenda for Tuesday. Let's get started from that. But in the context of his role, their role, and their obligations to us, it, I don't want anybody to be confused to think this isn't similar to when we have, you know, we, we're required un under certain conditions, you know, locally, things that we govern to provide, you know, notification right. to people in the area, written letters, public, you know, domain stuff like that, too. That's not really something, you know, that we do to do that. But it should it be an a, a question to ask that there's more to be here. Um, he'll be here on Tuesday. I think let's keep going so that we have them, so we don't lose them again. You know, the well, momentum. If you're if you're unsatisfied with the time that it took, and he was here previously, let's do this now. So we have him on the agenda for Tuesday. Okay. Well, I, as I said, I just came to ask you to change so that people who have children who want to come to meeting uh, have more than just a 
a day or two mm -hmm. to try and re rearrange a schedule. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not difficult for me, but it is for people who have children and people who are working and running businesses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. And again, earlier I did say agenda items, but we can uh, act on any Monroe relevant item that anybody else had. We don't have a lot in the audience this evening to do that. All right, so we can close that portion of our citizen comments and meetings to do that too. All right. Yeah, let's move down to. You're actually pretty far ahead. To approval of notes. Yeah. All right. So for the approval of the minutes that we have and for the citizens' night and the meeting of April the fifth, this will be our discussions on for Tuesday. Uh, the council agenda setting meeting of April the 5th in 2022 and our regular council meeting of April the 12th, 2022. We'll act on those at that time. Any questions from any council on the previous minutes? No. Any changes, anything else, Bob? No. Mike, anything? Good, okay. All right, so we'll move to that as well. Uh, to the approval of the tax collector reports here in your green section as well. Any questions on that section at this time? Uh, Eric, can we? Digress a little bit. Sure. Uh, th there's an item on the, the first page, a proclamation for National Police Week. Mm -hmm. That'll be next week. That'll, That'll be on Tuesday. Tuesday. That's on Tuesday. Okay. Mayor will, will read that, and then he, he officially reads it in the record for Tuesday, okay. and then signs the proclamation that time. All right. Thank that you. Yeah, that's, we have both on the, on the uh, handout here this evening. Okay. Next week. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Sure. No problem. <clears throat> Would have definitely heard about that if we missed it. Oh, if I'm back there, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, to do that too. Uh, any other questions on the our green section of our uh, approval of report and tax collections questions? Council? All right. And you have the list of bills and budget transfers in front of you and wells and payroll. So, list of bills for April and list of payroll for April. Any questions on that, Council? Additions or corrections? Yeah, Mayor, I, I uh, noticed on the list of bills here mm -hmm. the difference from uh, 2022 to 2021. That's a, that's a debt service, Mike. Okay. That's the question I was asking you earlier. Right, yeah. Okay. I looked at that, too, when it first went on. And a little bit higher. Yeah. I had yeah. the same question myself. Yep. No, it's a debt service. Okay. Okay. Anything else, folks? Good question. All right, close that for the list of business as well. And then we're going to move down to bids and proposals. Uh, Tim? Yeah, uh, we had uh, a bid come in for uh, the traffic light at Wingate and uh, Monroeville Boulevard. And we got two bids. And one bid was from uh, Bronder Technical Services, a prospect PA, and one was from Traffic Control and Engineering Company. And council has the uh, sheet from Mr. Hugis. Um, and we think that this uh, price here from Bronder Technical for $299,999.99 hmm. kept it under $300,000, I guess. Um, Tuesday night, I would uh, recommend that council uh, pass that and uh, award the uh, bid to Bronder Technical Services. And the note be below that Paul in his uh, memo is that we have a grant in the amount of two hundred twenty six thousand seven hundred nine dollars and seventeen cents that will pay for the majority about seventy five percent of this so that'll be on the agenda for you to award on tuesday mm -hmm. questions from anyone yeah i do have a question sure, Bob. Uh, on this uh, traffic uh, signal they're putting in new signals okay is that going to include a blinking yellow light they're doing throughout the state for a left turn Understand that traffic signals are governed and permitted by PennDOT. Okay. So whatever they determine that we should have, we should have. And to answer your question, yes, one of the approaches will have a blinking yellow light. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. It moves us on to Senate General our new business as well, and that's Tim, I believe. Yeah, a new business. Uh, this is for a KDP Roosevelt 369 LLC, otherwise known as Taco Bell. Applicant is requesting site plan approval to construct a 2,722 square foot restaurant and associated site amenities. Property is located at 204 Duff Road and known as tax parcel ID 743G066 in the C2 Business Commercial Zoning District. 
This application is a revision to the application 24ST Penn Monroe Shops over there at the development on 22, which most people in the community know about. The Planning Commission has recommended approval with conditions. Yes, sir, I assume you're the applicant. I am. I am you can Chris sign Sotos. in and state your name for the record, please. I am Chris Sotos, the manager of KDP Roosevelt 369 LLC. Mm -hmm. Great. Welcome. Please. So uh, we previously had Taco Bell on the west end of the development uh, next to a single-tenant Mission Barbecue building. Uh, late last year, the Taco Bell franchisee sold to a new franchisee, a bigger one. And at some point this spring, the new franchisee asked us to look at the site plan and requested a dual drive through lane. Uh, many quick serve concepts, the coffee shops are all doing significant drive through volume. <coughs> uh, hence the reason for the two drive through lanes. <coughs> we previously had the, the Duffero building under contract. We tried to make it work with our plan. A year and a half ago, we couldn't. Uh, somebody else had under contract earlier this year. We made contact with them. We now have a site plan that we think works very well that will get Taco Bell uh, away from the rest of the center and keep their drive through traffic contained. Uh, and it won't spill out in front of Mission Barbecue, which is a, a high volume. Uh, fast casual restaurant and uh, we think this plan would work very well it does require a few variances uh, some setback variances along both Duff Road I think against Jiffy Lou as well as maybe in the rear of the building <coughs> I believe there's probably already a lot of non-conforming use with the building as it is because it sits so close to Duff Road you know, we looked at trying to reuse the building for a year, year and a half, and uh, <coughs> it just, this is very difficult for us to call an audible three quarters of the way through our development. I was, spent most of my day at the site, Aldi's gonna open up June 22nd. Mm. Uh, wow. It doesn't look like it's that far along, but it is. Key Bank will open up in July, and the rest of the center will happen later this year. But it's the right thing for the development because of the traffic patterns and we think it'll help clean up the corner. The, uh, the Duff Road building is just not reusable. Is that a, a drawing that they're in place? Chair, if you want to yes. zoom in on that, please. And could you highlight for everyone and point to it directly to some of the changes? So the Taco Bell building was previously located just so all con excuse me, just so all council knows, you have a copy of the schematic yeah. in your packet. We did. We did. Yeah, just so you know. So the Taco Bell building was previously located on the near the end cap of the two tenant building where Mission Barbecue is now located. Uh, we flipped Taco Bell to Duff Road, <coughs> this area here, where it will take up the current Duff Road building and some additional land to get the two drive through lanes uh, and the bypass lane included. So the access point will stay the same on Duff Road to come into the center. You'll be able to make a right to get into Taco Bell or continue on Duff Road to go into the rest of the center. And you can see that um, with the grade changes, there'll be a need for some retaining walls on the east end of Taco Bell and a retaining wall against the Jiffy Lou building, where right now I believe the Duff Road building acts as a retaining wall <coughs> for Jiffy Lou. There's a, a grade change there. You're talking about the audio uh, building? Audio yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The audio building, that'll be torn down, obviously. Yeah. We're tearing that building down. Right, right. Okay. And the so, Jiffy Lou's up <clears> a little higher towards the... It's a tricky site. Right. Yeah. Are, are we going over the conditions at this point? Is that what we're talking about, or what are the conditions? I ask, I, yeah, I was going to ask Mr. Weldon if he wanted to comment on any of this, too. The conditions are standard uh, for all the site plans. Uh, there's about 12 different items that uh, we always put at the end of the letter, you know, and, and it, it's just a, sort of like a catch-all to make sure that everything is uh, in accordance with our zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. 
to those are the normal conditions. Correct. Right. There's there's nothing out of the order. Because you mentioned variants. You mentioned a variance. Variance. They've already been approved. They've already been approved. Okay. okay. What were the what were the variances? Uh, the parking was within our, a required yard, and I think uh, the building was maybe too close to a, a side yard setback. It was it wasn't anything uh, insurmountable. It went okay. through zoning hearing board without any issues. Okay. okay. So if we approve this, all the conditions will be met. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. To, to do that. All right. Any council? Anybody? Any other questions? Bob? Yeah. Is there additional uh, water retention with this new building? That that's part of the site plan application. The original. Uh, yes. Okay. The, yeah. So it doesn't change the the requirement in the surface area of the space. Correct. And uh, to to do that for the norm part. Yes. Okay. That's good. Thank you. <coughs> Mike, anything? Any questions? No. No. Gentlemen? <coughs> okay. All right, sir. So, everything else here? We'll look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Okay. I'll All see right. you Tuesday evening. Thank you. Thank the, you. The next item is also his. You, you might just yeah. oh. stay there real quick for the subject yeah, the, portion. Yeah, the next item is, is the uh, is a, is a applicants Thanks, requesting Bob. a preliminary and final subdivision approval to subdivide the tax parcel 743G066 and 743G070 into three lots. Lot 1 is 2.26 acres, lot 2 is 2.201 acres, and lot 3 is 0.642. Property is located at 204 Duff Road in the C2 Commercial District, and the Planning Commission also approved this subdivision. And do you want to reference it also? We have the picture of the site up here oh, there we go uh, as well and if you want to Jared can change back to that site plan I think you can include it it's on the one side of it is it not yes yeah and if you would highlight it please so the piece of land is right here this may here. seem a little odd you're gonna have to slide it slightly to your right I believe yeah there we go Okay. Could you highlight it again, please? Yeah. This is the original piece of land of the Duff Row building. As you can see, we are increasing the parcel this way, mm -hmm. going back yeah. north and a little bit west to enlarge it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Paul, will there be a, a, a reciprocation agreement with the parking? or? Yes, that, that has been revised. Uh, they had a reciprocal parking agreement for their original site plan back okay. in 20, 2020. Uh, so it's it's slightly modified, but it's essentially the same agreement. All right. And sa same issue questions before approval with the normal conditions attached to Correct. the process yes. and the planning commission recommends it in this place. Okay. Questions, council? No. Anything else? Did you know? Okay. So now we'll look forward to seeing you back on Tuesday. Thank again. you. Thanks. I appreciate your time. <laughs> sure. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Paul. While, while the applicants here, uh, since they're coming from Chicago, will they need to be present at next week's meeting, or will council just vote on it, just, just for their convenience? Pleasure, council, for this. I'm I'm comfortable personally, Bob. Yeah, if if they if they choose not to be present, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, council can uh, ask them to come if there are any further questions. But given that there weren't that many questions tonight, I'm assuming that there won't be any on Tuesday. I'm so good with it. The, yeah. the council's able to act on it if the applicant's not here. Mike, good as well. Good, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, all right. Thank you. So you can you can head home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very guess, much. Guess you're not bringing the tacos, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can still get them. <laughs> all right, Tim. Next one. Yeah, number three is Spring Run uh, Potokolsky Homes. Applicant is requesting site plan approval to construct 12 townhouse units and associated site amenities. The property is located <coughs> in the Spring Run Drive and known as Tax Parcel ID. And there's a slew of them here, and I'm not going to read through all of them. Okay, they're in the R R4 Multifamily Residential Zoning District, and the Planning Commission recommends <coughs> approval. Uh, with conditions. This is their last lot, I believe. Am I correct, Ray? Mm -hmm. It's the last lot on this. Okay. And we have a, in council, we have it also in our packet, I believe. It's in yes, the orange section. A, yeah, it's in the yeah, there's a plat in your, in your packet. Okay. Somewhat busy looking, but nonetheless. And if we can zoom in on the site plan, there we go. There's, there's a Google Earth, and which is well. 
State your, uh, state your name, please. And Ray Gusty. My name is Ray Gusty from Farragut McCarty Gray. Yeah. Thanks. If Ray. I can orient everyone to the to the drawing <coughs> here. So this is the overall site plan <coughs> for uh, uh, small. for Spring uh, Run. Yeah, move it, move it up or down, whatever. Uh, I think it's down. 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 There, down. You go. Yeah. there you go. There you go. There you go. You're good, Ray. Yep. Never get this right. <laughs> it's opposite. Yeah. So this this is the overall plan oh, for Spring Run. Yeah. So the main entrance is off at Macbeth Drive. Tilbrook Road defines the west property line. Mm -hmm. uh, Cambridge Square Apartments uh, borders the south property line. So this area outlined in red is the proposed phase 3A development. That's the original 15 townhome units that were approved. Mm -hmm. and the, re the rest of Spring Run is already developed. So this gives you an idea where that development falls within the Spring Run plan. This is this is a, an enlargement of that area outlined in red. So, uh, in December of 2006, council approved this plan, um, but uh, he only uh, so he for some reason he he didn't finish through with it. But mm -hmm. uh, um, the plan remains the same as what was approved back in 2006. So <coughs> anything that would be changed. Uh, staff had us update the stormwater based on the current stormwater ordinance. Other than that, everything else remains the same. The roads are already existing, uh, the utilities are already in, the rough grading has already been done, and these first three units of the lighter shaded brown here are already uh, constructed. So we're asking for a reapproval of the remaining 12 units. Okay. Do, do, Mr. Mayor. Question, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, do you have plans of continuing the sidewalk on Tilbrook? We, we show the sidewalk along Tilbrook within within his parcel. Okay, so it'll continue from where it is. Okay. Any other questions, Council? <clears throat> Anything from Planning Commission, Paul? Any bits of information? No. Uh, <coughs> as uh, Ray stated, you know, it's a reapproval. Essentially, the permits and developers agreement had expired. Not much has changed. Uh, they're just sort of going through the motions again. Right. Okay. Will these roads remain private? Yes. Yeah. It's a very good question. Yeah. Too. And uh, trivia question: and The fire hydrants are available in that por portion. They're within the limits because they stop a little earlier in that that parcel. Yeah. There's a hydrant. There's an existing hydrant in front On of this, Tilbrook. this four-unit building here. Could you point it again? Point to it again. In, uh, it's right here in this green space between uh, units four and five. Eric, I think they put that far hydrant in whenever they were doing the development originally. They just never completed the, well, yeah, the road. It's on the other pass. That, that, now, yeah. I do remember where it is now, yeah. too. Yeah. And the an existing hydrant out on Tilbrook, but there's no access to it and from there. Right. Okay. Mr. Mayor, yep. uh, is one hydrant sufficient for that whole complex? Well, it, there's we're more. just for that vicinity. For that vicinity. There's other within okay. the complex. Okay, yeah. thank you. It's in our 600 foot standard okay. space between them, too. That's why I was asking if it was extended to, to that as well. All right. Any other questions, Council? <coughs> nope. All right, Ray, thank you. Okay. See you again. Thank you. Tuesday. Motions are you, right, Tim? Okay, yes. The first motion is a motion to authorize to advertise an ordinance to adopt the 2018 edition of the International Property Maintenance Code. This is done periodically. Obviously, the last one uh, was, was when? 2015. 2015. Okay. Any questions on that, Council? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, codes are updated, what, every three years? Correct. Why aren't we asking to do the 2021? We parallel what the UCC does with the, uh, what the labor and industry does with the building codes. So the labor and industry just adopted the 2018 version. So we parallel the property maintenance code with that. We just adopted those in February. So this is just sort of keeping that same addition with the building codes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, hey, uh, good. Item number two is a motion to authorize to advertise an ordinance amending the administrative benefit ordinance number 2630 to include police cadets, cadets Act 120 Municipal Police Officers Education and Training Commission. 
Uh, this motion and number three um, are we have nine possible officers who are going through their background checks and their polygraph uh, checks, and some of those are not Act 120, and they will be considered cadets, and council uh, will make a decision on what their uh, salary and benefits will be, and this is part of it. Any questions on that, council? Do you want to just mix them all, all these three together? Just keep right on going. Well, yeah, okay, number three is the same thing. On It's a motion to authorize to advertise the ordinance amending the administrative salary ordinance, number 2753, to include police cadets. So one of them is for the benefits and one of them is for this salary. Any questions on that, Council? <clears throat> Okay, number four is a motion authorized to advertise an ordinance to amend the non-uniform pension plan. And what this is, is to include in it uh, family medical leave. Um, if somebody goes on family medical leave. And so that'll be on the, uh, this is just a motion to, to uh, authorize to advertise as all of them are. Mm -hmm. okay. Any questions on that, Council? Moving forward, great. Okay. okay. Um, just want me to keep going? Yes, there? please. Okay, resolutions. <laughs> a resolution resolutions. adopting the Mod Wash Sewage Planning Module. This is a uh, more or less a housekeeping item duty for Mod Wash, which is the one on 286. Am I correct, Paul? Correct. Okay. Any questions on that, Council? Yeah, we're at on 286. Um, next to the CVS on the left. Was it that far? I thought it was next to the family, old family dollar. No, it's that yeah. far up. It's further oh, up. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. I thought it was next to the family. <coughs> Any other questions, Council? Okay, number two is a resolution authorizing the display of various event banners at the corner of the intersection of State Routes 22 and 48 within the right of way of property belonging to the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. We passed the same resolution last month, but this is going to include the library when they advertise, as Pam was just talking about, their uh, Fun Fest, I believe, is the major thing that they. Uh, Advertise. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that, Council? Yes, yes, sir. As long as the banners are back far away, it doesn't impede. Uh, oh yeah, the yeah, no, yeah. They do. You're correct there. And we have to expand on and correct me if I'm wrong, Tim. And we also expand every time because it's not ours. And Penn, this is something okay. Penn Dot requires us to do in the event of of property damage. Okay. And okay, and <coughs> also a resolution authorizing the participation of the municipality in the redevelopment authority of Allegheny County's vacant property recovery program subject to certain requirements. For the benefit of the public, what this is, is that if there is an adjacent vacant lot, uh, or even if it is not vacant, uh, next to your property, and it is not big enough to build on, it's been vacant for years, then we are, the municipality has to pass this resolution to enter into the vacant uh, lot program with the county. And then people who may want to do this for various reasons, um, to acquire the property, just to own it, um, or, or any other manner, it, most of these properties you cannot build on, they're too small. Um, so we have to enter into it by passing this resolution, then we can accept applications for that and there are several criteria <coughs> that I'll just go mm -hmm. through just briefly uh, what some of the criteria is. Be a vacant <coughs> lot or vacant structure, have at least three years of tax delinquency, and be located in a part participating municipality, which Monroeville, if council passes this resolution on Tuesday, Monroeville will be. And property must be less than one acre in size. And I'm not going to go through all of the eligibility. Um, and we can put this on our website if we all don't have it on it already. And so those people that are interested can apply. And when you get an application, the applicant, uh, him or herself, or family, or whatever the case might be, they apply to the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County directly. They do not give the application to the municipality because, in turn, we'll just give it to the uh, uh, to the county themselves. Does council have any questions on the uh, entering into the uh, vacant property program at the county? <coughs> Gentlemen? Uh, no. No, no question? I, I have one. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a property that is, would fall under that condition. Uh, my in-laws 
gave a lot to the church on Center Road at the top of the hill, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not buildable. Uh, how's that going to affect the church? Well, they're nonprofit, so they're exempt from ta property tax from it too. But right. But is that going to affect them by the, doing this? If if I can, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. So so what happens normally with this? Uh, Mr. Stevenson is that um, somebody's interested in a vacant lot that they see that's next to the property that they have something along those lines okay, and then not they have to make application to the county to do that so I guess there would be a possibility that if somebody wanted that lot um, someone might make application to the county it may or may not meet the requirements but what I'm thinking about is is the way you're describing it it doesn't sound like it would have a whole lot of utility to somebody no. The other thing is they can't use it for some purpose other than uh, the purposes that are in the that zoning district and so forth. So I think more than people using it sort of offensively to try to uh, gobble up properties, it's a thing where uh, it's a tool to help get properties that are out there and nobody seems to want to get people interested in taking the properties and adding it onto their own. Okay. Well, we don't want to do that. We gave it to them, so. Right. <coughs> okay. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> Yeah, is there a copy of that in our packet? Um, the, re the resolution is uh, not, the, uh, not all the uh, application instructions and everything. The resolution is there. If you want to take a look at that, I can, I'll get you a copy. Okay. Okay. Is it on the, uh, our website? I, can't, I, website? I think I gave it to Tina. I'm not sure. If not, I'll put it on tomorrow. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions, folks? Yes. Yeah, Bob. Uh, the purpose of these programs are to get delinquent properties and the county takes them over which don't pay any tax and we want to get back to the tax roll and any dollars is better than no dollars and, and that's the reason for entering into some of these uh, programs. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay, excuse me. All right, any other comments on that? No, sir. Thanks. Great. All right, let's move to our reports of uh, municipal staff, but... Um, Mr. Ratcher, do you have anything? Um, I'm going to have something for Tuesday night, but Mr. Little's on such a roll right now that I'm going to yield to him, and he can just keep going. Well, I was going to. Did we want to? I was going to cue in Mr. Sedlak and uh, at this time early because I think they have a TU15 have something too as well. Get them early from cleanup oh, day. Oh, okay. for cleanup day, Joe. Make, if you don't go mind, ahead, can go move ahead. into. Yeah, the, that's more important than what I have to say, or more me, interesting. That's review for sure. the or activities to clean up day as well. And I think you can do it, and if I'm not mistaken, Jared has a couple of minute presentation that's so. running too, so it was up earlier. Jared, do you want to get that running while, while Joe's uh, explaining? Um, yeah, I mean, clean up day went really well. Um, I want to thank all the volunteers. We had 425 volunteers, wow. picked up 907 bags of litter, um, 44 tires, and six TVs. Bicycle, too. I got a bicycle. You got a bicycle? I got I a bicycle. That. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it, yeah, it's the volunteers that make this thing. I mean, I, I just organize it, and the picnic and the uh, prizes at the end, that's just gravy. I mean, I'm just happy that everybody comes out and cleans up. Yeah, our, our chefs were hard at work. Mr. Adams, Mr. Stevenson as yeah. well, too. We all survived the, 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 the cooking. Mr. Hizzy was up in there, too, slinging a few hot dogs here. as well. And they're giving it was well done, Joe. Other yeah. Children yeah. A yeah, very well done. And play. Yeah, and that, was, and that was up almost well, twice the number of volunteers, I believe you said, from the last couple of years. I get COVID. But. Well, yeah, we, we used to get four to 500 people. Um, that was the biggest picnic ever. That was the most people we ever had to picnic by far. Who's that? We have our picture back, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Joe. Jo. Well yeah, done good, again. Good job. Thanks. Good job, Joe. Uh, and everybody Very else. Very good job. Thanks, everyone, too. So go ahead, Tim. No, okay. Um, okay. Uh, this Saturday <clears throat> is the Walk for Ukraine, sponsored by the Monroeville Rotary Club. It's uh, going to be meeting at uh, 12, p 12 p.m. noon at the uh, Pavilion Number 1, which is the first one on the left when you come in the second entrance. And then there'll be a walk around the, uh, on the trail, obviously, and then they'll uh, meet back at the uh, Peace Pool, that, uh, the Rotary Peace Pool, and there will be a little small ceremony uh, <coughs> for uh, peace in Ukraine. So we're looking forward to everybody attending that. I will be there. Rain or shine. 
Okay, also we have the Memorial Day pic uh, parade, not picnic, parade uh, that we haven't had. I, I think it's been the last two years because of the pandemic, and that's going to be obviously on Memorial Day, and that's going to be the uh, American Legion, uh, and everybody meets at the uh, Valley Honda, and then uh, we have the uh, ceremony at the um, cemetery over here at the Old Stone Church. So I hope to see everybody there. Um, also, Council, in your packet is a letter we received from Allegheny County on, and I want to say possible, but hopefully, they will be paving, uh, milling and paving uh, Haymaker Road between Penlear Road and Broadway Boulevard, and they will be um, milling and paving and base repairs and draining improvements, shoulder work and guide rail replacement on Patton Street. Uh, Wilmerding and Monroeville Road between Jefferson Street and Monroeville Boulevard. So obviously they qualify that by saying it depending on if some emergency happened elsewhere in the county or rain, weather delays it, um, it could be delayed or it could be scratched. But uh, in most cases they do get this work done. So all those people that live in that area, I'm sure they're going to be happy about that. Any questions on that, Council? <coughs> I got a question on that. Uh, always a pet peeve of mine when they do a road and they make potholes every manhole. And I see here where the county says of supply the risers that they'll be glad to put them in. So maybe <coughs> make sure you contact Joe's story if they're water. Done. Done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I already had that conversation in an email with Mr. Story. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Super. I, there, there's complaints on Monroeville Road, too. There's some bad ones there. And uh, it's just... The worst one was up in Wilkins Township at Penn Center, but they filled well, that they in. Fixed that. They fixed yeah, that. Yeah, they well. did fix that. That yeah. thing had to be four right, inches. Right eight. in the roadway. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple on Patton Street, too, that are that are awful. Uh, they, they have about a six-inch drop in one storm uh, grate. Uh, I think we ought to do everything we can to get them to repair them, whatever we have to do. Thanks, Paul. All righty. I hate it when you're ahead of me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number four. Okay. Uh, beginning on May 12th, uh, we are going to begin the public hearings for our five-year capital improvement program. Uh, and then also have a second public hearing on May the 19th. Both of those will be starting at 630. Uh, department heads will be uh, giving their presentations. Uh, on the capital items, the, the capital items for the next five years uh, in a municipality. This is a, uh, a major endeavor by the staff um, and by council to make the decision uh, on what programs we're going to be moving ahead with and financing. So we're going to be starting that on May the 12th. Any questions on that, council? Okay, last one. Well, not the last one. I got one after that, which mm -hmm. is not on here. Uh, a household hazardous waste and electronic collection event will be on July 16th. We have this about three times a year, and that will be at the Public Works Building. So go on to the website and register for that. It is encouraged. I encourage you to register for that. And the one item that is not on here is that um, Mr. Hugus and Mr. Estock at the council meeting on Tuesday is going to give an update for council on the Valley Park Bridge, uh, oh. walking trail bridge that's, um, that we got a grant for and we're in the process of moving ahead with that. And we have four new council members that may not know a lot about that. So they're gonna give an update on that Valley Park Bridge on Tuesday. Oh, great. Okay, because we have Good a proposal hear. from Streamline <laughs> Engineering uh, on, on that particular project. So that'll be coming on uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. And uh, we already talked about the cleanup day, and uh, also we had um, two retirements. Um, oh. In the Jill Doscat, um, who has been in charge of our payroll and helping Josie out in the finance department. Jill, we're going to miss you. We're going to miss your smiling face, and um, and good luck in retirement. And uh, I hope you keep busy, which I'm sure you will. You said you like gardening a lot, and also Michael Kohlberg. Sergeant Kohlberg has retired, and uh, so those are our two retirements. A lot of people retiring over the last four or five years here in Monroeville. And that concludes my report. All right. Thank you, Tim. Anything else for Mr. Little? Question. question. Yeah? Uh, on this uh, household hazard waste and electronic collection, 
The reason we pick up so much of that stuff on uh, cleanup day is because people hate to pay anything to get rid of this stuff. So they just throw it alongside the road. Is there a cost? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a cost. There's a cost. Okay. I believe it's this. Because there's you, a cost. Uh, when you sign up, you get the information. Yeah, the information's it's on the website. On the website with it for items, weight, volume. I, I took all things like, last time. Okay. Cost per pound. Uh, cost per pound. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. It's on there. Yeah. Paint. All right. Other reports of municipal staff. Mr. Hugis. We. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Josie, anything? I don't have to say? anything. Okay. Joe, Paul, anything else while you're there? Nothing from the chief this evening. We don't have any other co public comments out left for this evening to do that as well. So our reports of council as well. Mr. Hizzy. Yeah, I only have two items. Uh, my deepest sympathy to the Sugar family. I know Tom for a long time, so I have deepest sympathy to them. Uh, other thing, kudos to Joe. Your dad would have been proud of you on Saturday, buddy, let me tell you. It was a hell of a turnout. A great bunch of people showed up. We had fun. We Thank did. you. That's all I have. We did. Mr. Stevenson. Uh, I have two items also. The first is more of a question. Uh, I've seen different accidents around our municipality, and it doesn't appear that after the accident, all the stuff that's on the ground goes away. Do we have an ordinance that does something to that or who has to do that uh the chief's here we so we will i mean we, have we, we definitely need to do something because that stuff lays on the I side of the road the police off, right? <laughs> mr cole by state law that the towing service is supposed to take care of that the problem is that when they do that when there's a reportable crash and there's vehicles that need to be towed when you have a crash that still has debris on the road and they exchange information and go on there's nobody to clean it up. Mm. That's it's a non-towing event. It's a non-towing event. Okay. That's correct. By state law, the salver slash the tower is responsible for cleaning the highway. Now, obviously, if you get yourself into a hazmat incident or something major like that, it changes. And even then, um, you know, they, the towers a lot of times, as well as you know, emergency management or the fire chiefs, they'll bring in a, sal a company to clean up the big hazmat stuff. But for the reality, uh, normal day in, day out crash, <clears throat> you know, we do about 2,000 of them a year. So we have our share in Monroeville. Of those, just to throw some numbers at you, approximately 400 are reportable, which means they needed to be towed or there was injuries. Of those, there's about 170 that have injuries. That's some real rough figures. That's, pre that's pretty steady between 18 and 2,000 every year. So if it's not reported, then it just stays on it the side of the road. It just stays on the side of the road. <laughs> so, I mean, I, it's just kind of, you know, I mean, the tower does have the responsibility to mitigate. And, of course, the fire department that responds on the ones with injuries. Right. They'll help mitigate some of that, too. They'll put you know, oil dry down and they'll clean it up with the tower. Right. But it is the tower's responsibility by state law. By the vehicle code. Thank you. Bob, I'll tell you that if it's on a municipal road, public works picks it up. Uh -huh. It's on state and county roads. We kind of hope that they would do it, <laughs> but they typically don't. So, eventually, we got to get it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the second item, uh, our deputy mayor appointed me to uh, some committees. Uh, one is public works. Uh, I had a meeting a uh, week and a half ago with uh, Mr. Little and uh, Mr. Yugis. Uh, we went over a multitude of things. Uh, only one that I care to talk about tonight. We found a problem with our uh, plowing and salting in one area of, of uh, our municipality. The area that I'm concerned with is uh, Tillbrook and Haymaker area on that side of town. When our crews load up in the morning or afternoon or whenever the snow event happens, they load up at Public Works over off Center Road. And then they go and, and, and do uh, their, their routes. Well, most of them don't have enough salt to finish their route. They have to come all the way back to Public Works and then go all the way back out, which is costing us wear and tear on the vehicle, uh, more fuel for the vehicle, overtime. And, and overtime, depending on when they're doing this, because it, it could be during rush hour and it could take them three more hours. So that's something that I feel we need to fix. And I have polled the council <coughs> and, and talked with everybody, and we have come up with a, a solution uh, to, to this problem. And the solution is to add 
a, a salt uh, Down. shed Down. at Down. Uh, uh, Johnson Road at our training center, which is on that side of town. And it would save them from coming all the way back to Public Works to get salt and finish their route. So it'll save us time, money, and wear and tear on the vehicles. <coughs> so as far as I'm concerned, it's a no-brainer. But if the council has any questions, uh, I'm, I'd like to hear it. Actually, Bob, that was proposed years ago. When that uh, training center was being developed, oh, okay. Public Works had a section there where, where we were supposed to have a storage building and a facility there. Okay, but it never happened. It never happened. Okay. How, how far is it from Adderley to the uh, Public Works building? How many miles? Anybody know? I, I don't know. Over six. I was going to say about six to seven miles. Six to seven miles, yeah. yeah. That's about a gallon of fuel each way then, or more. Depending on how many trips they have to make. Yeah, right. So uh, w what I would like to do now is is uh, just charge Mr. Little and, and Mr. Yugis to get us a salt facility at the training center prior to next winter. Mr. Yugis, too, also, and there's any feasibilities and costs and things like that as well, too. Yeah, the logistics of it, I mean, it's, uh, you know, you could probably, I don't necessarily know that we would use it at every event. You know, if it's something that a small event, we probably just use our, our standard facility. But if it's uh, if a significant event where you're going to make a lot of trips, it only makes sense to do that logistically. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we could probably shift a quarter of our trucks to that facility to make shorter runs um, and be more efficient. Well, see, take a look at the, the site and the layout for it as well to see where it fits in the, the time, you know, the layout of the whole. Yeah, I mean, we've looked at it, you know, some general locations where it would work. Um, you know, there's already, it's a big parking lot. It already has lighting. It's, you know, and off, they already it's off the, there. They it's off the road beaten path. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, logistically, I think it would work great. And, you know, Joe and Mike are right. We, I know when we, we built that facility originally, that's that was oh, the design right was to actually store salt trucks there and have a remote facility. And over over a period of time, it'll pay for itself by them not having to go back and forth and back and forth in the overtime and the fuel. So I agree. Okay. Yeah. So is that something we'd build in-house, Paul, or is that we'd have to contract? No, I think that we could do it in-house and with the majority of it. I, you know, the clear span structures is probably the only wild card. We're getting prices on it just to see what they would do for them to install it versus us install it. But, uh, yeah, it's relatively simple, to be honest with you. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll have something available for the capital for the hearings? I don't necessarily know that. But well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I get the figures. impression, Council, we want to do this, as Bob said, you know, before. Prior. Prior, mm -hmm. prior to the, the winter, I mean. Snowfall. So. It'll come out of capital, but it's, um, I don't think you have it on, you have it, you don't have it in your capital, I don't think. I, actually, I think I do. You may, okay. okay. I think I All do. Right. All right. All right. So with Those that. in our disagreeing. But we always do. So with that said, that's all I have. All right, great. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it, too. Mike? No. I'm just going to read it. Nothing Bob? Yeah, on, this, on these accidents, we're doing an accident on that road. There's always a police report. And if Public Works cleans up a mess, can we build an insurance company? Well, there isn't always a police report. Yes. Uh, again, a non-reportable does require a state report which means there's a report, there's a, a correction, a reportable crash involves a state report. A non-reportable, if we get called to it, we don't get called to all of them, okay. we get called to the vast majority of them. When we do, it's an exchange of information, there's a minimal report done to it. It was like a, we have a three-part sheet or just to make sure everybody has the correct information. As you do by the vehicle code, <coughs> if you're in a property damage only crash, you go ahead and exchange information with the people involved. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, the public works does come up and do. I mean, we had a major one on 40, 48 with an overturned dump truck. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. they, without their expertise at that time and their quickness, that clearing 48 would have taken a lot more. I mean, it took McGill four or five hours to get that thing totally upright and ready to go. But the, the reality was we opened the traffic at least one lane each way within the first, you know, 45 minutes of that call because we dragged the truck out of the way and we started up, up, uploading all the... Uh, Although it was actually gravel, thank goodness. So, so that's just one example in the past year. But it, it, it comes back to you know again, we don't always get notified of them. Um, you know, so you might be surprised at that it's just a matter if we see them, we'll have to make sure we can notify you know Public Works to come pick it up. Yeah, if we can recoup any money through the insurance <coughs> company, then I would say do it. Okay. If we can, yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Right. 
Anything else, Bob? Uh, no, not, not tonight. Okay. Thank you. Tuesday. All right, great. And finally, for myself uh, as well, uh, one thing we reported on last Tuesday, we met, um, our intergovernmental committee, committee met with the school district. Uh, <clears throat> it was the mayor, myself, Mr. Biondo, and the manager. Uh, we appreciated their hospitality uh, that was in place there too. We talked about some general areas for cooperation between us and the school district on uh, some increased, some of their concerns and security matters uh, to do that as well as uh, emergency communications uh, in, in place. And they wanted some impact on roads, bridges and paving was an interesting conversation. They wanted an update from it too as well. So we were able to provide that you know, to them. Uh, we'll be looking again to continue to meet in August on some of their shared ideas. Um, I know that they're going to be in contact with the police department and, and Mr. Little on some issues uh, to discuss as, as well. So it was a, it was a worthwhile trip uh, over to the school district and we'll have the next one here in August. Um, other than that, I don't think I have anything else. Any other items from staff as well? If not, I'll look forward to a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? All right. We're adjourned. Thank you.